From creepy crawlies to spiky defenders and deadly strikers, the poison type is one of the coolest in all of Pokemon. With this in mind, I challenged myself to try and beat Pokemon Shield under hardcore Nuzlocke rules with only poison type Pokemon. Here's how I went. If you're not familiar with the hardcore Nuzlocke rules, it takes the difficulty of Pokemon and cranks it up to extreme. If a Pokemon faints, it's gone for good. I'm also limited in the number of Pokemon that I can catch, and battles are made even harder by banning Dynamax, enforcing level caps, not using items in battle, and playing on set mode. To protect yourself against poison, you'll need plenty of antidotes. And to protect yourself while on the internet, you'll need today's sponsor, NordVPN. With just one click, Nord will encrypt your browsing data to keep you safe from all kinds of nasty criminals. Not today, Team Rocket. Uncle Nord has got my back. To secure your big discount on a two-year plan and receive four months free, visit nordvpn.com slash keeganj. But wait, there's more. Nord can connect you to servers in 60 different countries, allowing you to unlock games and international streaming content that is not available at home. I'm all over the map. And look at all this extra content. Thanks, Nord. Even more, you can use Nord on up to six devices. That's a lot of protection. So click the link in the description and visit nordvpn.com slash keeganj to secure your two-year plan. You'll get all these benefits at a huge discount, four free months, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Very cool. Back to the video. Before I start, be sure to like the video, and if you're new to the channel, click subscribe. It's completely free and helps me to keep bringing you content, so I'd really appreciate it. With that taken care of, let's get started. You might be wondering, which starter am I going to pick? None of these are poison. Well, I did pick Grookey since it's the best starter, and I know we can all agree on that, but I'll need to head elsewhere to get my poison starter. Since I have the DLC installed, I can head on over to the Isle of Armor, where I'm gifted a Bulbasaur that I nickname Ivy. With my true starter now secured, I can finally begin the challenge. It's also worth mentioning that I had to catch a Slowpoke as part of the Isle of Armor quest. Galarian Slowbro gains a poison typing, so I'll hold onto Slowpoke for now, but can't use it until it evolves. I did decide to nickname it after one of the deadliest poison animals on the planet. The Platypus. Seriously, look it up. Over in the wild area, I'm allowed to get one poison encounter now, and one extra encounter for each gym badge that I obtain. Now, poison Pokemon are defensively weak to ground and psychic types. Bulbasaur can deal with ground types, but psychic types are a real problem. To make matters worse, psychic Pokemon are a specialty of one of my rivals, Bead, who looks like an old lady but is actually a young man. Under the right weather conditions, if I head over to North Lake Mylock, I'm guaranteed to find a Stunky in the grass. I'm able to catch it and give it the nickname Funnel Web. It also has the stench ability, so I hope that my character has a nose clip. More importantly, Stunky has a secondary dark typing, which makes it immune to those pesky spoon-bending psychic types. I can't stress just how incredibly useful that is. Now in Motorstoke, where I'm able to upgrade my style with the poison uniform. Seriously, how sweet is this outfit? Over on Route 3, I'm able to get my next encounter. I could have gotten a Stunky here, but didn't want to risk it not being the first encounter. So instead, I run around until I find a Trubbish, a literal garbage Pokemon. Also, my Bulbasaur sprouted and evolved into an Ivysaur. Ivy the Ivysaur, so bold, Keegan. My first real challenge of the run comes in the form of Bead, who's waiting for me in the Galar Mine. While Stunky can't be hit by psychic moves, I also don't have any dark type moves yet to deal damage. While I am able to take Solosis out, Endeavor substantially weakens my Stunky, and I won't be able to solo this battle like I was hoping. Fortunately, Ivysaur knows Grassy Glide, which hits for big physical damage, allowing me to just outlast Bead's last two Pokemon. After exiting the mine onto Route 4, I've got a 5% chance to encounter a Badu. I spent ages looking for that damn plant. I had to train the Meowths chasing me like zombies, but eventually I was able to find what I was looking for. After furiously shaking a stick for 20 minutes, Badu's happiness increased, as did my likelihood of suffering arthritis. Regardless, this allowed it to evolve into a Roselia. I'm now ready to take on Milo, but I don't expect his grass types to give me much trouble. I lead with my rubbish bag and use Amnesia to increase my special defense. My leftovers help keep me healthy as Gossifluor goes down to Acid Spray. Elder Goss isn't too threatening, even with Dynamax. I use Protect to reduce the damage from two of its max moves, stalling out the Dynamax. From here, a few super effective Acid Sprays gives me my first badge. Milo, I'd call you trash, but that would be an insult to my literal garbage bag Pokemon. Over on Route 5, I'm given a sassy Toxel that I nicknamed Mumba. 
After defeating some Team Yell Grunts, this scientist takes my Rotom and force feeds it into my bicycle. What is wrong with you? After defeating Hop without much trouble, I've made it to Holbury for my next gym challenge. While Poison and Water is a neutral matchup, I've got two Grass types on my team, giving me a huge advantage. I lead with Ivysaur and land a Leech Seed, as well as a Sleep Powder onto Goldeen. This lets me safely switch into Roselia and buff my special attack with Growth. From here, it's a clean sweep of Ness's water types with Magical Leaf. Too easy, that's badge number two. Into the second Galar Mine, where I'm able to add the Poison Puncher, Krogunk, to the team. Feed and his psychic Pokemon challenge me to a rematch, but I'm much more prepared this time. Stunky now has a Dark type move in Bite, which allows me to handle Bead's team without too much trouble. After exiting the mine, the game comes full circle in a literal sense as I'm back in Motorstoke to take on the third gym. Kabu's fire types are much more threatening than the first two gyms, as two of my Pokemon are grass types, and Krogunk doesn't deal well with fire due to its dry skin ability. But with two new badges, I've also got two encounters to help me build a strategy. First, by fishing in the bridge field, I'm guaranteed to encounter a Quillfish with a level range of 26 to 28. But of course, the one that I find is level 28. As this is above the level cap, Puffer the Quillfish won't be usable against Kabu. In search of my last encounter for now, I head over to Loop Lagoon on the Isle of Armor. Here, I'm able to catch Blue Ring the Marini. It's a bulky stall Pokemon that will really help me handle fire types. I've never seen a Pokemon ooze so much confidence and swagger. Krogunk is definitely a vibe. With my team now at the level cap, it's time to take on Kabu. I lead with Trubbish, and my plan is to set up two layers of Toxic Spikes, which will badly poison Kabu's Pokemon on entry. My plan was to then switch out, but I didn't account for Fire Spin trapping me. I could only watch as Trubbish was burnt to a crisp before my very eyes. Rest easy, Toxic Waste. After sending out Stunky, I'm able to land a Toxic onto Ninetales, followed by Venoshock, which does double damage to a poison target. With Ninetales weak, I use this opportunity to switch into Marini and stall out Ninetales poison. Arcanine is next, but is immediately poisoned by my Toxic Spikes. Marini's Merciless ability guarantees a critical hit against poison targets. So, a Surf and a bit of Protect Stalling allows me to take it down without too much trouble. Last is Center Scorch, and my best bet is to go full stall mode. By alternating between Protect and Recover, Marini is able to survive until Center Scorch eventually succumbs to the poison. That was my toughest fight yet, but that victory earns me my third badge. It wasn't all good news though. Losing Trubbish was a big blow. Before going any further, I needed to give him a fitting burial. Even though I lost a Pokemon, I think that battle really demonstrated some of the awesome poison combos that are available. Toxic Spikes, Venoshock, and Marini's Merciless ability can rip teams apart. While traversing the wild area, I noticed a change that had been occurring inside of me. The more I used poison Pokemon, the more toxic that I was becoming. Embracing the toxicity, I completed my ensemble with the poison backpack, changed my look, and printed a new trainer card that was much more fitting. Now in Hammerlock, Rose shows us how electricity is made. Looks clean and green to me. While on Route 6, Toxel evolved into Toxtricity, one of my favorite Gen 8 Pokemon that has such a cool design. I was able to find my next encounter, Skaroopy here, who I gave the fitting nickname of Deathstalker. Finally, my beloved starter reached its final form, evolving into Venusaur. Hop wants a rematch, but this fight is pretty low risk. My Toxtricity can electrify his Cramorant to take it down in one shot. Silicobra is next, and it should always use Dig here. Knowing this, I switch into Venusaur and use Growth to buff my offense. The rest of Hop's team can't keep up with my walking salad bar, and a few petal blizzards secures the win. To prepare for the next gym battle, I evolve Stunky into a Skuntank. I also ventured into the Forest of Focus, where I was able to add Venipede to the team. I'm able to evolve it first into a Whirlipede, and then into Scolipede, one of the most horrifying things I've ever seen. I didn't realize it at the time, but my Scolipendra is the Pokemon that would break this game. Time for the next gym. Alistair's lead is a Yun Mask, which isn't too threatening. I go with Venusaur to land a Leech Seed, and then switch into Scolipede to boost my attack with Swords Dance. Yun Mask can deal some damage, but the recovery from the Leech Seed that I set up earlier, combined with my leftovers, maintains my HP. With some insane stat boosts, the rest of the fight is very clean as I can sweep Alistair's team with Dig. Easy mode, get good kid. To celebrate the earning of my fourth badge, Krogunk evolved into a Toxicroak. Wait, really? Bede wants to fight me again? Alright, Skuntank, end this man's whole career. I embarrassed Bede so badly that he was instantly disqualified from being a trainer. EXP management is becoming a real problem, so I quickly move through the Glimwood Tangle while avoiding all of the optional battles. 
Once I reach Bolognia, it's time for another gym battle against Opal's fairy types. The strategy this time is unchanged from my Alistair fight. Lead with Venusaur to set up Leech Seed before switching into Scolipede. While boosting my attack, Weezing hit me with a critical hit, but I survive it comfortably. With my attack maxed, Weezing falls to a Poison Tail, as does Togekiss. Morwile is immune to poison attacks, so I've included Dig in my moveset to handle it. Last is Dynamax Alcremie, but one insanely boosted Poison Tail does the job, earning my fifth badge. Opal tells me that I'm too toxic to be her successor, but that's fine by me, geezer. After the battle, Marini evolved into Toxapex, gaining a nice bulk increase and access to the move Baneful Bunker, which has great synergy with my current strategies. The next battle against Hop was definitely not as clean as I expected. I lead with Toxapex to set up Toxic Spikes, before switching into Scolipede for my usual setup. Thing is, I hit myself in Confusion twice in a row, and Trevenant got a critical hit. That was close, talk about unlucky. Having to tweak my strategy, the rest of the battle largely evolved around pivoting my team and dealing big damage with Venoshock onto my poisoned opponents. Toxapex was able to stall out the Inteleon to give me the win, but that was one of the closest battles I've had in a while. I think that battle speaks to the strength and diversity of my poison team. Whether it's quick striking or stalling for a slow death, we've got you covered. The next two routes don't have much for me, but I am able to find a shiny stone which I can use to evolve Roselia into a Roserade. A short trip north brings me to Surchester for the next gym challenge against Melanie and her Ice-type Pokemon. Fortunately for me, Skuntank knows Flamethrower, making it a huge asset for this gym. This lets me take out Frostmoth immediately. Darmanitan survives a hit, but goes down on the next turn. This brings out Ice Q, whose Ice Face ability is a little annoying, but offensively it isn't too dangerous. I pivot into Toxtricity and use Noble Roar twice to harshly nerf Ice Q's offense. Venusaur then sets up a Leech Seed before pivoting into Scolipede. With Ice Q's stats lowered and my Leech Seed plus Leftovers combo keeping me healthy, Scolipede could drastically increase its attack and speed. Just as Ice Q is about to fall to Leech Seed, I baton pass my stat buffs to Toxicroak. Dynamax Lapras is an absolute tank, but my insane stats lets me issue a devastating brick break to finish the fight, giving me badge number 6. GG, no re, Melanie. To travel across the watery Route 9, I'll need to take my lame looking bike. But honestly, I'd rather take this than be carried by Toxapex or Quillfish. Ouch. Anyway, across the pond, I encounter Marnie, who isn't pleased that I've copied her hairdo. But let's be honest, I wear it much better, and to assert my dominance, Toxicroak wipes the floor with Marnie. While preparing for the next gym, I evolve Skaroopy into Drapion, who gains a secondary Dark Typing and is therefore immune to Psychic. Piers uses Dark Type Pokemon, which is a pretty neutral matchup for my team. He leads with Scrafty, so I go with Venusaur to eat the Intimidate and Fake Out on turn 1. I could try and use Scrafty to set up, but it knows Sand Attack, which would introduce too much RNG. As such, I set up a Leech Seed before switching into Toxicroak, who can safely finish Scrafty with two Brick Breaks. Malamar is next, and I know that it wants to use a 4 times effective Psychic move, so I switch into Skuntank, who is immune. I take a little bit of damage, but a few Night Slashes gets the job done. Obstagoon hits pretty hard, so I switch into Toxapex and land a Poison with Baneful Bunker. A Venom Drench harshly lowers Obstagoon's offense, allowing me to stall out the Poison with Recover. Pisa's last Pokemon is a Skuntank of his own. It's too bulky to take down quickly, so I switch into Venusaur to land a Leech Seed. This slowly saps Skuntank's health, and one last dig from Scolipede is enough to earn me the penultimate badge. Before I tackle the last gym, I head over to the Isle of Armor to find some new team members. Up on Challenge Road, I was able to find a Salazzle. Next up is the Courageous Cavern, where I'm able to add Box Jelly the Tentacruel to the team. Finally, after collecting some sticks around the island, I can venture to this lady who will give me the item to evolve my Slowpoke into a Slowbro. The Galarian Slowbro has a Poison Typing and an awesome looking Shell Cannon on its arm. With some tweaks to my team, I'm ready to take on Raihan. This battle really scares me, as most of my strategies require some form of setup. The issue is that this is a double battle, so I won't have enough time to implement any kind of setup. I've given Tentacruel a Choice Scarf to increase its speed. With this, I'm faster than Flygon and land an Ice Beam to take it out immediately. This is followed by a Choice Specs Pedal Dance onto Gigalith, giving me a double KO on turn 1. So far, so good. But Dynamax Duraludon is a huge threat, and its Steel Typing grants it immunity to Poison. Raihan Dynamaxes and hits Venusaur for big damage, but it just hangs on and finishes Sandaconda with another Pedal Dance. I'm locked into Pedal Dance for another turn, and just have to hope that Raihan targets Tentacruel. And of course, he didn't, and another Max Steel Spike spells the end of my beloved Ivy. Sweet dreams. Skuntank is bulky enough to survive a hit, allowing me to finish Duraludon off within two turns. 
That fight was always going to be risky, but it was devastating to lose Ivy there. I decided to bury my Venusaur right next to its old pal Trubbish. After adding Toxtricity to the team, it was time to take part in my new favourite tradition, stomping on Cabby Jeffrey. I will never forgive you, coward. Next up, Winden for the final leg of the challenge. My first opponent is Marnie, and the stakes are definitely high, as the loser has to get a haircut. In all honesty, this fight isn't even close. After boosting my attack with Swords Dance, Scolopede can sweep through Marnie's team without much trouble at all. Now book that hair appointment and stop copying my style. Next is our old pal Hop, and beating him in private just isn't enough. This time he wants to be embarrassed in front of a live audience. Being the toxic trainer that I am, I've given Scolopede three stat boosting moves and baton pass. After maxing my defense, Double can barely lay a hoof on me, freeing me up to boost my attack and speed. Look at these insane stats. Baton pass allows Toxicroak to inherit these boosts, followed by a very prompt sweep of Hop's team. My toxic traits are just too strong for you, Hop. After butchering a string of macro cosmos grunts, I'm faced by Rosa's sidekick, Oleana. Her first few Pokemon really aren't difficult. Skantank melts Frostlass, and Toxtricity can easily handle her Milotic, as well as the Salazzle that follows. I could take out Serena, but I'm worried about the Dynamax Garbodor that will come out next. It has Stomping Chantrum, which is really dangerous for my team. My plan for dealing with this involves Scolipede, but not in the way that you might expect. I do baton pass some stat buffs, but I actually max my defense and pass this to Toxapex. It's already a bulky Pokemon to begin with, but this turns it into a defensive monster. After stalling out Serena, Garbodor emerges. It does big damage on turn 1 due to a crit, but it can barely touch me on subsequent turns. Once Dynamax ends, I pivot around to try and find an opening, but Garbodor insists on chipping away at my team. Eventually, my team is too weak to continue switching, so I decide to simply PP stall with Toxapex until Garbodor runs out of Stomping Tantrums. From there, a few Brick Breaks from Krogunk ends the absolute marathon of a battle. The game then has me take on four of my previous foes in rematches with much improved teams. However, my toxicity was at its peak and my combinations were just too strong, resulting in each of these battles following some variation of the same formula. With this in mind, for the sake of brevity, I'll cover these battles relatively quickly. First up is Bede. I ended his career once, and I'll do it again. A few noble roars from Toxtricity puts a muzzle on Morwile. Scolopede is then free to set up Sword Stance and Agility, followed by a very brutal sweep of Bede's Pokemon one after another. You should have stayed retired. Next is Nessa, and the strategy here is even simpler. I use Agility on Scolopede, and Baton pass this to my Choice Specs Toxtricity. From here, I outspeed and one-shot every single one of Nessa's Pokemon with Overdrive. That was not pretty. Next on the chopping block is Alistair. His Dusknaw lead is pretty weak to begin with, but I nerf it even further with a few noble roars. As is tradition, I then send out Scolopede, who buffs its stats with Swords Dance and Agility. I then baton pass into my sweeping Skun Tank and obliterate Alistair's team with a barrage of Night Slashes. I bet he's crying under that mask. Last is Raihan, and thankfully, it's not a double battle this time around. His Torkoal lead sets up the sun, but I counter this by using Rain Dance with Tentacruel. This lets me surf all over Torkoal on the next turn for a clean KO. This brings Guja to the field, so I switch into Toxtricity and begin landing Noble Roars. Leftovers and Protect helps keep me healthy, allowing me to nerf Guja to minus 6. Scolopede then does its thing, maxing its attack and buffing its speed before passing these boosts to Toxic Croak with Baton Pass. This clears my path for another sweep, giving me a very easy win over Raihan. That's revenge for my beloved Ivy. I'm ready to tackle Leon, but all of my concentrated toxic energy has caused some kind of natural disaster. Over in the slumbering world, I'm able to catch a Weezing. I don't even need one, I just want it because of how ridiculous this Pokemon looks. Welcome aboard, Smoko. Rose confronts me about my toxicity, determined to give me the help that I so desperately need. He's built a team of steel types, which is probably the biggest counter to my team. But I came prepared. I gave Scolopede the heat rock and taught it sunny day. With a harsh sunlight now in effect, I switch into my choice spec skun tank to lay down some seriously powerful flamethrowers. This allows me to easily remove Rose's first four Pokemon. His Copperaja barely survives a second flamethrower, and sadly, finally takes my skun tank down. You were a real hero, Funnelweb. With Copperaja so low, one last attack finishes the fight. Rose knows that I'm beyond help, and can only deliver a sad smile. I added Weezing to the team for comedic effect, then headed to the rooftop, and what I saw was truly horrifying. My toxicity had outwardly manifested itself as a poisonous dragon, but my team was still too strong. 
A few noble roars from Toxtricity rendered even this monster powerless, and Tentacruel was able to weaken it considerably with a slew of ice beams before a switch into Toxicroak ends the fight with Sucker Punch. Against the Dynamax Eternatus, my strategy is simply to stall while the rest of my team does the legwork. This works reasonably well, finishing Eternatus once and for all. All that remained was Leon. Fortunately for me, this isn't Pokemon Evolution's Leon, this is the much less intimidating Sword and Shield counterpart. I lead with Toxtricity, who lands a Noble Roar, but suffers a huge critical hit. Knowing that my best bet is a Sacrifice, I land another Noble Roar, but Toxtricity holds on out of sheer love. But sadly, on the next turn, Mumba finally falls. Toxapex is next, and I set up two layers of Toxic Spikes just to be safe. Another switch into Scolipede allows me to begin my setup. One Agility, and three Swords Dancers. From here, one Dig is enough to finish Aegislash, the Cinderace that follows, and Dragapult. Once Haxorus emerges, I baton pass my boost to Toxicroak, who barely survives an Outrage. From here, a few insanely powerful Brick Breaks are able to clean up Haxorus, and Leon's next Pokemon, Seismitoad. Last is his signature Charizard, but a Brick Break falls just short of taking it down, and Toxicroak finally falls. On the next turn, Tentacruel survives a hit before landing a Surf to finish Charizard and the battle. With that, I'd become the most toxic trainer in all of Galar and completed a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Shield with only Poison types. I think that this run showed just how strong the Poison type is, as well as the awesome combinations that you can pull off with these deadly Pokemon. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for me. It's completely free, but really helps me out. Who was your MVP of the run, and what challenge would you like to see next? Let me know in the comments. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.